Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I have for you another wedding series episode. I wanted to sit down and basically chat with you all about everything that I've done till today. To be exact, today is February 8th, so we are four months away from the wedding, which is insane. But I feel like I haven't actually sat down and spoken to you guys about my wedding process and the things that I've done and I wanted to share that with you all. I thought it would be a really cool idea for me to go over my wedding binder, which in my opinion, is the best wedding planner book even though i've barely used it but i am hoping to get my hands on this and actually fill out everything until where i'm supposed to be right now before i go through this with you guys i am going to give you a rundown of everything that we've done so we got engaged december 17 2021 and basically i just took that month and loki january to fully enjoy our engagement time before I dove right into planning. So those two months, I just truly enjoyed it. I think it's really important to enjoy it together as a couple before you even share the news on social media. I actually took the entire weekend to soak it all up because it's truly like you're on cloud nine when everything happens. So I wanted to just enjoy the feeling because it was nothing like I've ever felt before. Um, and I really enjoy that I did that and like took those days just for us and our immediate family to know that we were engaged before announcing it. But the second February came in last year, I dove right into making my wedding vision board, which 100% recommend. Basically, you have to sit down and truly go through Pinterest and figure out what your style is going to be or just start pinning items and photos and inspo that truly resemble what you would envision your wedding to be. Prior to getting engaged, I didn't have a Pinterest board for like wedding stuff. So I just started pinning a bunch of things that I found beautiful and that I really enjoyed and I think would go with our style. And from there on, I started with the mood board. So it started off with just like the overall vision and that's going to be like your first page. So your first page should be your kind of like welcome, Natalie and Eric, our wedding date if we have it, or our year. Um, so I basically just wrote Natalie, Eric, 2023 and put a bunch of pictures that resemble our wedding or what I envision our wedding to be. Um, and those were, I think, only six photos for the first page. Then moving on to the next page, you can break it down into ceremony, how you envision your ceremony to be from flowers, from the floor, from the chairs, from everything ceremony related, you put all in that specific um, sheet. I also made one for the welcome party because we are having a welcome party. So I made one just with the vision board of what I would want our welcome party to be. However, however, fast forward to now, welcome party is on standby because it is so expensive to add to our budget. Um, I didn't really think it was going to be that much money, but Casa de Campo, is is something else it's a topic for another day we're definitely going to be toning down on the decorations and a lot of the things that i had on my vision board for the welcome party because it's money that i'd rather put on our actual wedding day um even though to me i find that a welcome party is important for a destination wedding so that everyone can get to know each other before the wedding and truly just like enjoy the wedding without being strangers yeah i started off with our title and main vision then i did one for our welcome party then ceremony you move on to your cocktail hour so how you envision your cocktail hour to be and just you know little things that you want to add for your cocktail hour and then you make another one for reception you go in detail with like the tent if you want a tent the tones of your wedding the flowers the lighting the table again just very detailed with how you envision certain categories or parts of the wedding. I also made one for cakes, basically how I would want our cake to be. We're not really dessert people, so I don't want a huge cake or way too elaborated cake. So something very simple and I put that in our vision board. And I think the last one was for our florals and what I would like our flowers to be and just like the types of flowers, also our bouquets, my bouquet, the bridesmaids bouquet. And yeah, that's pretty much the vision board that I created. It was about eight pages I think. I feel like you don't necessarily have to go all out with that because at the end of the day a lot of wedding planners will do that for you. My wedding planners actually did um, but you know having mine and comparing the two I can pick certain things that I just don't like. However I am a type A person and type A bride. Um, I don't consider myself to be a bridezilla though I have to admit. I don't think I am. Um, at least not right now. 
so but yeah the presentation is not a must i am just a visual person and again a type a person so i find that to be helpful for me and just how i work also a creative outlet that i could just express myself so i really enjoyed making that and i made it on pick monkey by the way so highly recommend it so that was the first thing i did in february and then i started interviewing different wedding planners in dominican republic i originally wanted a wedding in new york However, I was convinced by my cousin that it is cheaper in Dominican Republic and it's just, you know, better to have a destination wedding. You can shorten your list that way and you can just have a more intimate wedding. I quickly learned that destination weddings aren't as cheap or affordable as we assume them to be, especially in Dominican Republic, especially in Casa de Campo. So it's been a learning curve. Um, just don't go with the idea that a destination wedding is going to be a lot cheaper. It might be a little bit cheaper, but not, not by a lot, to be honest. I forgot to mention, but the first thing you should do when wedding planning, even before making your vision board, is creating your wedding guest list. It is the hardest part, but just writing down every single name, every single person, immediate family, extended family, friends, like secondary friends um, and just like write everyone down, right? And then start cutting down the list to priority people and a list of maybes of people that you would like to invite but you're not sure if it's going to fit with your budget. So that's number one in my opinion and it truly was just so tedious and not enjoyable at all. Uh, but it helped a lot to have that straight off the bat out of the way and after creating your list you go ahead and talk about budget together and what your max budget is and what your ideal budget is and then go from there with creating your vision board and you know all of that presentation that i mentioned after deciding that we wanted a destination wedding i immediately knew that i wanted to do casa de campo and thankfully my friend stephanie was going to get married the following month in march so we were able to tour the area we were able to truly explore and experience the whole casa de campo weddings there which was really nice to experience prior to us fully deciding that we wanted to go with Casa de Campo. Before going to my friend's wedding, I've never been to Casa de Campo, so that was a really nice experience, and I knew that that's what I wanted our wedding to be like. So before going to Dominican Republic in March for my friend's wedding, we ended up interviewing a bunch of wedding planners. The best place to find wedding planners, even if it's a destination or local in the States, is in WeddingWire.com because you can actually read reviews and, you know, get a long list of different wedding planners. You can find so many different vendors there as well so highly recommend weddingwire.com for specifically anything wedding related it could be photographers if you're looking for wedding photographers in the Dominican Republic there's a long list for that or if you have a Mexico wedding you can also find wedding planners photographers and all of that on there so we found a few however before even searching I knew a specific wedding planner that I really 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 wanted um, just because her weddings are super elaborate and just the most stunning weddings ever and I reached out to her I got a quote back and it was just outrageous and I knew that it wasn't even remotely close to our actual budget so I discarded that um, I also didn't get good vibes if I'm being honest um, if you know you're gonna know who I'm talking about I just didn't feel a connection with the planner and I felt like they were giving entitled vibes so it was just not for me but we ended up interviewing a few others that we found on wedding wire and my friend pamela also recommended and pamela and i actually ended up having the same wedding planner <laughs> Um, which is great because then we get to experience that together as friends after interviewing a couple I immediately clicked with my current wedding planner and I absolutely love them I just feel like you have to go with someone that you feel a good connection and vibe from so that's exactly What I felt when I interviewed them. So moving on to March. We went to my friend's wedding We experienced all of that. We got to see what Casa de Campo is all about and how weddings there can turn out to be um, we toured a bunch of different venues and villas and actually found our wedding venue while we were there If you haven't checked out our Casa de Campo vlog, I'm going to link it down below for you guys But yes, that was an amazing experience to be able to tour a few places prior to and being able to find the actual wedding venue Quickly after that in April, I wanted to start wedding dress shopping i was like this is going to be the most amazing experience ever i just want to find my dress and i know that i'm going to find it from the first store i just know it right jokes on me i literally started in april and ended up finding the dress all the way in september because I was just very indecisive. I was having a really hard time finding the dress or getting that feeling of this is the dress. 
and I was a little confused. I'm like, am I not going to feel that? Is like the feeling a fake thing that people make up? Like what is going on? Am I just not connecting with a dress? I don't know. I'm going to be making a totally separate video on that for the wedding series, which should be coming up soon. But yeah, the wedding dress process was just not the best for me. I truly was stressing it so much. And if you're going through the same thing, I totally understand. Just take your time because you will find the dress for you. All right, so moving on to May, I started working on our save the dates. I started looking for photographers for our engagement photo shoot so that we can use those pictures for our save the dates. I wanted our engagement photo shoot to be in New York because I figured since we're having a destination wedding, I wanted us to also represent where we're from, where we live, where we met, um, and just where everything started, which is New York. So I immediately knew that I wanted our engagement pictures here and that's what we did. So this is how they turned out. This is in the public library in like 42nd Street, I think, or around there, but absolutely stunning i think it's such a beautiful location i feel like if you have an elopement or a court wedding this would be a beautiful location to take your pictures and then in the back of the save the dates i included our email with the password and my favorite photo this one was taken at the top of the rock which was my first time ever going and it was an insane an insane view so another great place to take pictures so we ended up sending these out i did want to send these out like a whole year in advance because it is a destination wedding and i wanted people to plan out accordingly or save up if they need it for the wedding with enough time but speaking about wedding websites we ended up making ours on minted.com which has been amazing it's free and they have beautiful beautiful templates if you are having a destination wedding or even if you're having a local wedding it's a must it's amazing it's the best way to do it digitally in my opinion it's a must because everything that you need to include detail wise could be on the website and you can just direct everyone there and if people have questions you can have a Q&A section and just everything can be in one place so timeline wise we ended up having our engagement party in july at the end of july we also have a video on that which i'll link down below for you guys oh my god i also totally forgot to talk about the bridesmaids proposal which is another cool video that i enjoyed creating and i'm going to link it but yeah after getting the wedding dress in september i took september until december to just take a break and enjoy the holidays because when you have a destination wedding i feel like there's an intense limbo period where you don't do anything there's not much for you to do. There's not much DIYing that you can do. So fast forward to now, four months until the wedding, I wanna talk about the things that I'm currently working on and the things that I've done leading up to the wedding. I recently shared on stories, actually last week, that we were doing our pre canna classes, which that honestly, I could have done a lot sooner, but I was postponing it and Casa de Campo was giving me a limit until this month. Eric and I are having a Catholic ceremony. I'm Catholic, I grew up Catholic. Eric is not. Um, his family, I think it's congregational, if I'm not mistaken because it falls under christianity we are able to get married with no problems or him having to convert i believe that's a new rule not having to convert getting married in the catholic church a lot of the times back in the day it was a lot harder but from what i understood if it falls under christianity you can get married in the catholic church however if your partner is jewish or muslim then they do have to convert to catholic that's obviously only if you are getting married in a catholic church so we ended up talking to one of the priests here and they told us that we needed to take pre canna classes and I honestly was postponing it for the longest just because I didn't really know what to expect from it. So we kept postponing it. But I'm so, so glad that we did it. It's been the most amazing experience and eye-opening. I have to admit, even though I am Catholic and I grew up Catholic, I'm not the most religious person ever. Like, I believe in God. I love God. But I don't have the best relationship when it comes to religion. And it's something that I would love to change and just get closer to God. I don't want to divert the conversation of wedding planning here, but just wanted to express my feelings on it. But yeah, I'm just so, so grateful that we were able to take pre canna classes and that Eric actually enjoyed it because him not being Catholic, I was like, ooh, maybe he's just going to get bored and not enjoy it. But it was such an incredible experience. Everything that we learned, they spoke about so many things that you would not assume, like, people in the Catholic Church would talk about. I feel like it was the best decision that we've ever made. And if you're not getting married under the Catholic Church, I think you should still find some sort of community or premarital counseling. I have the hardest time saying that word. Getting some sort of counseling prior to marriage is 10 out of 10 a must in my opinion so a little bit about it basically it's a six to seven hour class course and they 
talk about a bunch of things things that you would not even assume or expect people in the catholic religion speak about which was beautiful to see and beautiful to witness we talk about finances sharing your finances debt um and just like how to be open about it with each other if you have any family dynamic how you argue within each other one of the main things that i love that they spoke about was the fact that your partner always comes first before kids before parents before brothers sisters and family just always remembering that you two as a couple always come first they also spoke about sex and prioritizing it uh that was a little bit shocking coming from the priest but you know another thing that i loved that they spoke about was the five love languages and figuring out what your individual love languages are so that you can love each other with your separate love languages if that makes sense that was very shocking to me they also spoke about how to communicate with each other and arguing and how to like solve issues together and obviously the fact that having a godly marriage or having god in your marriage is really important so yeah that was a little summary of what our pre cana class was all about 100 percent recommend and yeah one thing checked off the list to be honest we also got the bridesmaids to purchase their dresses i have to work on the groomsmen asap and i also just finished working on our wedding invites which took me almost two months i started in december i'm getting it done with minted and we're doing a custom design which i'm so excited to get them in hand and actually see them in person and see what we came out with this particular box that has some samples inside it's actually free so i'll link it down below for you guys but now i want to go through the wedding binder with you guys and basically see what i need to get done in the four month period All right, so this is what the planner looks like future mrs fisher eric and natalie our wedding on the side and then inside it has a few different tabs this one is calendar and checklist budget attire and beauty ideas and paper events and guests the big day ceremony honeymoon vendors and hotel and then in the back i just have a bunch of little paper goods that i've been collecting but today i just wanted to go through the checklist that already comes here this is the 12 months we have six to nine months below and then the three to five months, which is where I'm at right now. But just to be sure that I've been doing everything, let's go through it. First is visit and book reception site, which we did. Visit and book ceremony site. Draft a guest list. Draft a vendor list. Select date based on the venue and vendor availability. Choose wedding party members. Hire a wedding planner. Officially announce your engagement. Create a guest list for the save the date cards. Pull together wedding theme ideas. To be honest, I wish I put like dates here as to when I did these but like i mentioned i just have not been keeping track brainstorm honeymoon ideas which we have not done and make a list of officiants moving on to six to nine months interview photographer and videographer which we've done shop for your wedding gown research music options have not done that send out save the date cards put together estimates for honeymoon options we know where we would want to go but we have not really sat down to truly talk honeymoon to be honest meet with the potential florist about wedding style and budget we have not done that but again i'm having a destination wedding so i feel like a lot of this is not necessarily 100 percent accurate when you have a destination wedding however we will be doing this pretty soon with my planners research menu ideas and meet caterer we actually did this put a deposit down on dj and band have not done that put the deposit down on honeymoon travel and accommodations this we really need to focus on the honeymoon apparently put the deposit down on florists have not done that purchase wedding gown and accessories um i guess yes block a hotel room for out-of-town guests finalize flower and decor we're working on this i don't think it's truly finalized shop for and select bridesmaid dresses and accessories this is actually good to go and select efficient discuss ceremony um mm -hmm. it's kind of like standby all right moving on to three to five months which is where i'm at and where i need to truly tackle shop for groomsmen's attire have not done that shop for wedding rings we actually went to check out a few bands um but we haven't settled on one yet make tasting appointments yes these are going to be next month for when i'm in dr for my friend's wedding shop for mother of the bride and groom attire we are actually doing this pretty soon i think this week meet with the baker and discuss cake designs this 
will has not happened yet but will be in 327 research wedding invitations design and wording finalize registries before shower Confirm date for bridal shower need to work on that provide guest lists for the bridal shower also need to work on that confirm date for bachelor and bachelorette parties check provide guest lists to bachelor and bachelorette finalize wedding guest lists yes brainstorm wedding favors we might not be doing this. Confirm that bridesmaids order their dresses and accessories. Pull together inspiration for wedding hair and makeup. Order invitations, mail out six to eight weeks before the wedding. Send out wedding guest list and invitations list to calligrapher, which is me. Book rehearsal dinner location. Preserve any rentals, equipment, tables, blah, blah, blah. Uh, we have not done that but we will be doing it in DR. Talk to friends, family who will be giving speeches and toast. Oh, talk to friends and family who will be doing readings at the ceremony. Finalize wedding cake design and flavors. That will not be done until the 27th of next month. Purchase wedding rings. Apply for any necessity passports, visas for honeymoon. Order or make wedding favors. Confirm groom and groomsmen's attire. This needs to be done ASAP. Purchase gifts for attendants, parents, and special guests. Purchase gifts for each other on the wedding day. Purchase ceremony and reception decor and accessories. Create playlists and timeline for DJ and band. Book a hairstylist and trial appointments. This is actually also happening the 27th. Book makeup artists and trial appointments. Finalize menu. Discuss joint finances and joint accounts and first gown fitting. All right and then this is the one to two months before the wedding but I'm not going to be stressing that right now so the end. But that was pretty much it. I hope you guys enjoyed. I think this turned out to be a really long and heavily detailed video but I hope it was enjoyable. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know which other videos you want to see in the wedding series and see you next time. Bye!